you know, I can see why these rawhides would make good drum heads as well as good bull strings. Hello everybody. Today I'm going to share with you how I make rawhide. Now rawhide and leather are very similar in that they both come from the same animal, but they're very different in the way they're made. You can think of leather as a pickling process, whereas rawhide is just a strictly drying process. Now, the most popular form of leather tanning, or at least the most popular tanning agent these days, is called chrome. So this is all chrome tanning. And the leather comes out quite soft. And this is a buffalo skin I picked up while visiting Colorado. The other popular uh, leather process is vegetable tanning. Now this, the pickling agent, is uh, a chemical called tannin, which is found in tree barks and as well as uh, a lot of tea. And this is a type of leather that people tend to use for tooling uh, because it holds a tool mark very well. This is a very thin one. There could be thick ones like these. These leathers are probably eight, nine ounces, and there's two of them, so this, the thickness of this flip-flop is probably around 18 ounces. And you can see how well, this is a new pair. <laughs> this is my old pair that I'm wearing now. And you can see there's a huge impression of my feet on here uh, because the great thing about vegetable tan leather is that it holds an impression, it holds its shape. It's almost like a perfectly fitted shoe after you break it in, of course. This rawhide, however, is going to be made just by drying it. So think about you take a hot pepper and you leave it and you let it dry. That's what rawhide is. And it's much simpler to make relative to leather. It's much harder to screw up rawhide than it is to screw up leather. So let's get started. The green highs I'm using came from two goats. There's a step in there where we try to remove the hair. Now during the dehairing step, this is traditionally done by adding wood ash, either from a softwood or a hardwood. But the goal of course is to raise the pH from 7 to a more basic pH around 11 or 12. Now this can be done with chemicals as well. The beauty of chemicals of course is going to be a lot cleaner, there's no ash involved. The chemical I'm going to use is crystallized drain cleaner. Now this is a strong base. Uh, it may be sodium or potassium hydroxide. And this stuff you do not want in your eyes to get in contact with your eyes or your hands. So make sure you read the safety instruction in the back. And understand, just in case we have a little accident. The safety procedure I would like to emphasize on is for our eyes. Now these safety glasses simply will not do because it's great if something splashes towards your eyes from the front, but what about the top, the bottom, and the side? So these, when it comes to chemicals, are completely inadequate. I recommend though are these goggles that you may have had in chemistry class. And I've had these since undergraduate and it's seen better days, but it provides sufficient protection if something splashes on the top, the bottom, or the side. And the beauty of these is that you can wear glasses underneath here. As we all know, when working with chemicals, we never want to wear contacts. But any goggle that provides top, bottom, and side protection is going to be better than those safety glasses. Okay, so now we can really get started. So these are two hides that are less than 24 hours old. And you can see there's a lot of flesh on one. The one on the left I've already cleaned off with some basic tools, such as a uh, draw knife that's quite dull. Scissors and a knife and resting on that uh, fence post. And it's locked in with a leverage system on a chain. So when scraping, it's important to take your time and make sure you don't scrape through the skin. I managed to put two holes onto the skin as I was cleaning it. And 
use whatever tool you feel comfortable to help you speed the process up. Scissors, knife, whatever. And fleshing is actually the most physically demanding part of the entire rawhide making process. And this one is having to have a lot of flesh on the back. But it's a good example of something you might encounter. So I cut the one on the right into strips, and the one on the left I'm going to leave as a whole. The strips are about two inches wide. So I have to dehair these guys, and I'm going to use a crystallized drain cleaner to raise the pH from 7 to 11 to check the pH, which is used litmus paper. And there's usually a scale on the side of it, and you can see this one is about 7. So add small amounts of this crystallized strong base. Strong base is probably uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. And it's called a strong base because it completely ionizes into its uh, cation anion form or you know, the plus ion and the negative ion. And you can see it's now at pH 11. So add slowly, stay upwind, wear goggles, stay protected, and just throw in the hide. This is about 24 hours after soaking, and we're going to go ahead and check the state of the hair. First we'll check the pH to make sure, oh wait, yeah, wear goggles, goggles are always important. First we'll check the pH and make sure that having the hide in there didn't shift the pH, you know, because it was in there overnight. And the hide at this point is very rubbery and Fluffy, I guess is a good word for it. The hair on the strips are not coming out. But the hair on these guys, um, on the whole hide, are going to come out with a little bit of effort. And so it's getting there. It should come out a lot easier than this. But this one is getting close to being ready. So back in the tub. 24 hours later, so 48 hours total. Still check the pH. And you can see the high, the hair on the strip hide is starting to slip. It started in rain, so we'll wait another day. Yeah, so the hide itself could really soak up a lot of water, especially the hair. You can imagine this being a cow hide be tons heavier. And I'm just going to lay this out on a flat surface. Use a little wedge that I cut up. Doesn't matter what you use. But you can see just with pushing and pulling back and forth, the hair should just come right off. So that's when something is ready to be dehaired. There was a little bit of hair left over on this and I didn't really bother trying to remove it. Maybe I'll keep that as a feature rather than... So one tie I was able to clean off pretty good. And the one, the strip ties, uh, the hair did not want to come off, so back to soaking for that hide. So let's go over, I'm gonna rinse the hide, change the pH, soak it, remove the borax, and then finally we're ready to stretch. So here I'm just rinsing off the base that it might be uh, in contact with the skin. Several small rinses is going to be better than large rinses. I'm still wearing goggles because there still could be some base left on there. So how do we check the pH? Well, I suppose we put... Uh, mm, and nah, I'm just kidding. Don't ever taste your experiment. So pH paper. And we can see it's back to 7. If it's not, go ahead and use some acetic acid, 4%, or as common white vinegar. I'm going to clean this with borax. Um, you know, don't worry about the amount that you add into it. Mm, maybe a little more. Yeah. So the borax is going to help us remove some of the oil as well as some of the smell that's in the skin. And let that soak overnight. So at this point, I have the other skin in there as well. I'm just going to wash it up with water after it's been soaking overnight. And then fill it with water and let it soak overnight to get rid of the borax and we're ready to stretch it.
We're just going to use knives to poke a hole and find yourself a, a nice rack of some sort. And I'm using some, I believe, leftover twine that used to be for making, uh, I think it was used for baling hay, but it got tangled so it can't feed in the machine anymore, so I'm just using it right now. So just stretch it out real tight from edge to edge. And it's pretty loose at this point, it's a little close up. I do want to say you should be careful with a knife or whatever you're using to make a hole because I cut myself on this and it didn't hurt but later it swelled up like to the size of a Vienna sausage so be very careful and take the proper precautions as usual. So about 24 hours and things pretty much done stretching and drying. See the parts has some parts of it has become quite translucent. I always find that kind of interesting as the hide shrinks and tightens up. So if now you would like to try to make your own rawhide, I would do a lot more research and understand and accept all the inherent risks that are involved in making rawhides. Uh, if it's your first time, I do have a few recommendations. First is to do it when the temperature is warm. When the temperature is high, the chemical process work a lot faster. And two, start with something small. Something the size of this cowhide is out of the question because remember the skin is the largest organ on the body. And a cowhide when it's wet can weigh over 100 pounds. And on the other side of it, there could be a lot of fat to scrape. So it becomes a very physically demanding process. So something small like a raccoon or a rabbit or maybe even a little mouse that you've trapped uh, would be a great first rawhide making. Uh, the stretcher for a mouse is probably going to be about this big. So another question might be, where do I get good skin to make rawhides from? Uh, the answer is hunters. Right? When hunters field dress, a lot of the times uh, they don't use the skin. So ask a hunter and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to bring you home a really fresh, a really good, and probably a really interesting skint from which you can make rawhides. So I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.